Throughout the years, the Pokemon games have consistently given us strong champions and incredible final battles, with some of the most impressive and likable characters in the entire series. You as the main character must overcome all odds in order to win and join their ranks in the Hall of Fame. Sun and Moon versions took this idea to a new level. These games introduced a trainer so powerful that all previous champions pale in comparison. This trainer is Youngster Tristan, a champion challenger. Rising above all other youngsters, even Youngster Joey, Tristan completed the Island Challenge and took on the Pokemon League with his team. This video is a tribute to his accomplishments in training Pokemon and an attempt at replicating them in hopes of maybe standing on equal footing with or even surpassing him. My name is Matt, but you can call me Absol. This is the Youngster Tristan Gauntlet. I hope you enjoy. So, what exactly do I have to do to match Youngster Tristan's accomplishments? I'm basing almost everything he did off of one line of dialogue he says after you beat him. He said that he trained on Route 1 as long as he could, and then he took on the Island Challenge and took on the Elite Four. And he has a team of 5 Pokemon at level 59. So in order to replicate this accomplishment, it seems like at first a simple thing. We just train a lot on Route 1, take on the Island Challenge, and defeat the Elite Four. But doing this isn't as simple as it sounds because we can assume that Youngster Tristan didn't have to deal with the whole Team Skull or Eat Their Foundation fiasco at all. I decided that instead of doing unnecessary calculations to somehow end up with a team of all level 59 Pokemon by the time I reach the champion, that I'm not going to cut any corners, and I'm going to train on Route 1 definitely longer than Tristan did. I'm going to take his five Pokemon that he had on his team and train them all the way up to level 59 on Route 1 only. Yes, this is going to be a pretty crazy task, and it's going to take a long time, but I have high hopes. The Alola region's Route 1 is a very vast place. It has multiple spots where you can find wild Pokemon above level 10, meaning that while the experience points are going to be slow, they aren't going to be nearly as terribly slow as something where I'd be fighting level 3 Pokemon all the way up to level 59. So first, I have to prepare by getting my replica of Tristan's team. So I'm going to breed eggs of all the Pokemon on the team. But I'm not planning on hatching them on my game. I want to try and take advantage of every single experience boost possible. And it's a pretty well known fact that if you're using a Pokemon that was obtained in a trade, it gets an experience boost. It's a little bit lesser known fact that Pokemon of foreign language origins get even more of an experience boost from that. So. I reached out across the internet trying to find someone with a foreign language game to try and hatch my eggs. But my problem is I'm not fluent in any other languages. So there was a little bit of a language barrier and a lot of confusion about why I needed these eggs hatched in the first place whenever I asked uh, random strangers. Luckily, my friend Monish, or aka Pokemon, happens to have a Chinese sun or moon file. So I traded the eggs to him and he graciously hatched them for me. Upon receiving the hatched Pokemon back, I noticed something interesting. Even though all their names were in Chinese, with the Chinese trainer's OT, at the top right corner of the screen where it would normally display the actual language of the Pokemon, there was nothing displayed. It turns out that uh, the language of the Pokemon isn't necessarily determined by who hatches the egg, it's determined by who generates the egg. So these were technically English language Pokemon. So. I didn't get the foreign language boost from this, but at the very least I got the traded experience boost, which was good enough for me. After that, I took these Pokemon into Pokemon Refresh in order to get the affection boost, that's another thing. And in these games, it's fairly easy to get the Pokemon's hearts up enough to get the experience boost. All you have to do is pretty much feed them one rainbow Pokebean and you're good to go. So I beamed up all my Pokemon. Alright, so today is June 16th, 2017, and I've finally finished all the needed preparations to start training on Route 1. So I guess, let's go and get started.
Alright, and there's our first battle. Let's see how much EXP we gain. This is with experience share on and with shared experience. Not bad. We're gradually approaching conditions where we can really fight things without having to switch every time. One forty forty three. That's where I'm starting out. Alright, it has been a little bit, a little under an hour I think, and my entire team is level 10 now. So I'm going to go heal up back at home, and I'm going to move on to some bigger grass. Or not bigger grass, like some grass with stronger Pokemon. Pretty much my entire team has reached level 20. So, in terms of just pure numerical level, we're a third of the way there. But, in terms of actual experience points, there's no way that we're a third of the way there. Still, it's decent progress, though, to have everything with 20. I did it all while chatting with these pals. So I guess in the morning I'm going to resume with uh, more, but I think I'm going to call it a night right here for now. Day three now, and I'm about to do something that I traditionally do in almost every one of these gauntlets. I'm gonna go for a little walk. It's always nice to get a little bit of fresh air, especially when you're doing something super level grindy like these level 100 gauntlets. Oh gosh, the camera. So far this challenge has been pretty smooth sailing, but I'm kind of worried about what lies ahead in this. The experience formula in the seventh gen games is a lot like the gen five games where the amount of experience you get is scaled based on the level of your Pokemon and the wild Pokemon you fight. Meaning that when I get around level 58, I might be getting as low as maybe 30 experience points per battle. So, I'm in for a ton of encounters in the future, unless the boosts that I have active right now really help me out. <laughs> I'm not too worried though, because I'm a shiny hunter, and I do thousands of encounters regularly. So having to do a few thousand encounters where I also have to defeat the Pokemon really isn't going to phase me as much as you might think. Hopefully. I might regret this in a few days when I reach that point. Who knows?
back from the walk and I made some pretty darn good progress. I'll show you the whole team in just a second. They're all in this ballpark though, around level 26. And just to get an idea of what's going on, I'm able to see how much experience I have. Uh, the slowest ones are going to need around 256,000 to reach level 59. And right now, the team is like level 25, 26. And they have anywhere from 15,000 to 23,000. So we still got a ways to go, but it's progress. What's up everyone? It's day three or day four. I'm not sure what to call it yet. I'm sure I'll have it figured out in editing. Skies are looking pretty bleak today. I think a tropical storm is on its way, but I shouldn't let this storm deter me at all because I'm sure that rain or shine, Tristan was out there training on the grind. No matter how stormy it gets, I'm going to get some levels in today. Both of my Pokemon that I have that can still evolve, Carvana and Magby, have reached the levels that they need to reach in order to evolve, but I'm choosing not to evolve them until they reach level 59 because as of X and Y there's an experience boost for anything that can still evolve by level up that hasn't evolved yet. So I'm going to milk every single little experience boost that I can get. So now I at least have that going for me too. My goal is to get as many levels as possible today before I take a little hiatus from this challenge to begin hunting for Safari Week. So, let's race against the clock and see what we can do. So it's the 4th of July right now. Pretty nice festive day. Kinda just walking down the street right now. I'm playing completely by sound because I doubt you can see, I can't see either, but playing by sound isn't too hard at this point because I'm just one-shotting everything anyway. With every passing level, this is turning more into a test of patience and resilience. So I'm going to take this on with a new mindset. I'm going to try and just completely ignore the experience bar because it's kind of like when you're on a road trip and you're watching the clock, watching how many miles there are or when you're cooking and you're watching to see how much time you have left. Whenever you watch, it feels like it takes so much longer. So I'm gonna just keep staying on the grind and not pay attention to the progress I'm making because if I do, it'll look like I'm making no progress, which can be pretty discouraging. But as long as I just keep encountering and pressing on, I'll be making progress. If you think about it, Unova and Alola are part of the same country. So right now I'm combining shiny hunting with these training because the grind is something comparable to shiny hunting and how long it'll take. So I think this will be a good little extra productive thing to do on the side with it. Oh my gosh, shiny young goose! Yo! This is my first random shiny on the gauntlet. Uh, I wasn't even counting. Uh, but I hit level 47. And here is a pink young goose. Don't have this shiny yet, so this is super cool to encounter. Very cool to run into this. Awesome. Over the next few days, 
progress slowed even further and further. But shiny hunting and watching SGDQ kept me occupied enough to not really even pay attention to the experience bar at all. At this point in the challenge, days kind of blurred together and I had certain productive days where I didn't film anything at all. So I'm kind of throwing the day numbering system out the window for the rest of this gauntlet. Alright, so we just hit level 50. I'm interested to see how long it's going to take to reach the next level. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go heal up to restore all of the PP, and then I'm going to start a new uh, recording and see how long it exactly takes for this execute to reach level 51. So let's go. That took multiple hours, I'm pretty sure. So, yeah, if not multiple hours, then almost two hours. That's what I'm trying to deal with right now. Let's we'll see if I can get through it for eight more levels. Well, I just found another totally random shiny while working on this gauntlet challenge. So that's pretty awesome. And it's a picky peck. It looks great. I've kind of shinoed on this one a few times, like I thought I, would, I had run into a few shiny picky pecks, but now that I'm actually seeing it on the screen, there's no way I've actually run into one of these before. And awesome! I think I'm going to keep this one a picky peck, because um, Trumbeak is such a common Pokemon in some other areas of the game, and picky peck isn't necessarily that common otherwise, so... I'm just going to keep it as this. It looks pretty cool. Let's see what nature it is real quick. Really awesome. Uh, keen eye, and it's impish. And this is the progress of my team so far. There's our burp. Uh, 
Let's check it out in battle real quick. So that's two random shinies while working on the uh, this gauntlet. There's a regular picky pack and our shiny picky pack. Cool. So Bonsly has the sturdy ability, which means that sometimes whenever I attack it, it'll last another turn and call for help. So I've run into quite a few SOS Bonsly because of that. And today, something special happened. Right now. <laughs> Check it out. Actually, let me move to a place with better lighting real quick. Alright, check this out. Shiny Bonsly. Totally random through SOS. Very cool looking. Great shiny. Also, I think having this Tauros at the front of my party, uh, it has the ability Intimidate, and I believe that Intimidate uh, increases the chance of SOS encounters. So anytime I use Tauros and it survives with Sturdy, it's incredibly likely that it's going to call for help. Caught it. Third random shiny on this adventure so far. <laughs> Been pretty fruitful, I must say. Not gonna lie, training really became a chore towards the end of the challenge. I tried to train whenever I could though. Pretty much wherever I went, I tried to bring my 3DS with me. Things got kind of intense. At times I thought I would honestly never reach level 59. Well, it's a new day and a lot of progress has been made. Uh, I think I'm going to change a couple things right now to mix things up for the end of this challenge. Um, first of all, I'm going to do something I could have done like 50-something levels ago with no bad consequence. I'm going to evolve my Execute. I don't know why I didn't do this sooner. And then I'm going to change the area where I'm training once again, and go out to sea. In this area right here along the shore, is still technically considered part of Route 1. And the Pokemon are much higher level. Well, not really much higher level, but they go up to 18, which is a lot higher than what I'm used to for this challenge so far. Meaning we can get more experience. So let's see what uh, surfing along this shore can do for us for the rest of this challenge. Yes. See, I'm still on Route 1 right now, surfing here, not the Melee Melee Sea. So this still counts for the challenge. Encounter rate's crazy low. I'm swimming in blood.
59. We have reached level 59 with one of our Pokemon. First one to do it wasn't even in the battle at the time. So now we have Executor finally at level 59. And I think it's uh, prime time for me to just go and deposit it in the PC so we can keep raising the other ones. It's been a very long journey, but I'm glad that Executor finally has 256,755 experience points. And you know what? The rest of the party's not far off from where they need to be either. Because the encounters at sea were going so slow, I think I'm going to do the rest of this back in our good old grass patch. Don't really have that far to go with the rest of our slow experience Pokemon. And at the end of the day, even though the experience gains here were small, they're really not that bad. I think ever since I started this challenge, my life has been slowly becoming more and more like Sun and Moon. I can't even ride my bike anymore. My tire is completely flat and busted. I just wish that I had access to a giant dog or a bull that I could ride instead. And that's another level 59. Another level 59. And this time we can actually watch it, this Carvana finally evolve into Sharpedo. Awesome. So satisfying to see that finally become a Sharpedo. Well now our three slow experience group Pokemon are at level 59. And now the Emolga and Magby I've hardly touched since maybe even a little bit before level 40. We'll finally get their own fair share of battling in. On August 8th, my birthday, I managed to get Magby to level 59 and evolve it while watching It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Then later that night, technically on August 9th, not my birthday anymore, I got Emolga up to level 59. Alright, Emolga has now reached level 59, meaning that we have finally gotten all five Pokemon to level 59 on our team. I started at 140 hours and 43 minutes, and now I'm at 235 hours and 2 minutes. That was an almost a 100 hour adventure. Then I gave a Magmarizer to my Magmar and evolved it into Magmortar via trade. Magmortar. And then suddenly, I had reached Tristan's level. I had all of his Pokemon exclusively trained on level 1 at level 59. Now there was only one more thing left to do, to take on Tristan with his own team. In order to preserve their level at level 59, I brought along a level 100 Buzzwole, and I turned off the experience share, so that Buzzwole could solo the Elite Four, and Tristan's team could take on Tristan. There's youngster Tristan. The fainted battle.
Uh, I just destroyed Tristan. It was a, it was a close itch battle. We both got down to our last Pokemon. But at the end of the day, my decision making was a little bit better, even though his moveset was better. Well, folks, we've done it. That was the youngster Tristan Gauntlet. And man, that was a long adventure. I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope to tackle another gauntlet soon. Maybe this next one will hopefully be shorter. But this was overall a pretty fun challenge. I wouldn't say I'd recommend it to everyone, but it felt good to uh, spend about 100 hours in Youngster Tristan's shoes. I'll see you next time.